Hello, welcome to Ivesco and the blog for October 2015 from my new place in Tapping. Super excited, I've finally moved. As you can see, beautiful backyard, lots of room to move. So yeah, awesome. Um, in a week's time, the Oxfam trail walk is on. Now I've got a couple of clients that will be taking part in the 50 as well as the 100k walk. So I thought today I'm just going to put some information out on how to prepare your body for um, the big walk that you're um, about to encounter. So it's just a few mobilization drills that I want to share with you that you may find will make it easier for you and your body to cope with the amount of walking you're going to be about to be doing. And um, those mobilization drills are not really only useful for walking, but also really good if you're, if you're a runner, um, jogger, sprinter, um, very good to get um, into those movements before you start with your dynamic warm-up and then go into um, your task ahead of you. So keep watching the video for those next four movements I'll show you and I'll explain to you and should you have any more questions um, just flick me a text and send me an email, give me a call and I'm more than happy to discuss and um, maybe even have a look via Skype or whatever what we need to tweak if you can't quite feel um, where you should be feeling things. So um, enjoy! The first mobilizer I'll show you is a sit and reach with a change of footprint. So by changing the footprint, all we're doing is we're giving the body variability, getting the force of the stretch, if you want to call it, though, to enter the body in different directions. And you should feel uh, different spots in your body by changing the footprint. So where you, this is where you're placing your foot. Um, you should feel a difference where you're feeling the effect in the body as well. We will also be adding, as you can see now, a cross body reach, which can go down to the ankle, down to the knee, or chest height, or even head height. So you can play with those um, factors as well. Important by the sit and reach is really just to go where you feel comfortable. Don't go down as deep um, once your heel comes up. So keep your feet flat on the ground. Keep your toes connected to the ground. Keep your spine long and tall, and let your hip, let your butt drive the movement and really reach your butt away from your hands so you're getting nice lengths through that whole frontal and back chain through your body and this should just nicely warm you up to get started the next one is to really go deep into the front hip so we're going into a split stand the back foot can come off the ground and we're tucking under the tailbone to already get some length through that hip and if you need again more length to feel a bit of a stretch right across that hip bone you can get your arm stretched up into the air as well and just keep it a nice smooth movement using your breath as your timing tool again the side view as well just so you can see keeping the spine long and tall keeping that tailbone tucked under reaching getting some length through that side where you've got your um, leg Put back and really try and feel that over the hip bone there again only go where you feel comfortable don't go into a pain zone a little bit of discomfort is fine but don't push your boundaries now we're going to be working on the sidelines so for this one I want you to take your feet close together go softly into your knees and again the driver is your hip so by having the knees nice and soft you will be able to actually move your hips from right to left Important here is not to bend through your waist, so keep again a long tall spine, having the spine nicely stacked onto your, onto your hips, onto your pelvis and keep that nice and straight. You can see on the sideline um, particularly well that you keep you're really staying in, in a nice line, so it's not the butt kind of turning, rotating, going back and forth, you're keeping it all nicely in one line. The Third one is for the inner hip hip capsule. For this one you go into a wide stand and one leg is long, the other one is bent. And depending on how tight you are, depends on how far you're stepping or how deeply you're going into that bent knee. As you can see right now, for me I had to go a bit, a bit deeper. Once you've got your position, then again you start initiating the movement from your hip. So it's always the hip moving spine staying long and tall there is no twisting or bending through the waist again your side view here so just nicely staying in one line again only going as far as you are comfortable this is not to really give you a deep stretch i want you to keep moving 
nicely timed rhythmical using your breath as your rhythm tool and it's really just preparing the body to to get going also those mobilizers can be nicely done all the way through your walk so whenever you feel a bit of a twinge going on your lower back is starting to hurt just give those um, few things a go and see if that makes a difference for you best of luck and heaps of fun with your walk